This video is about distance and displacement. So distance is the total scalar length of the actual path that an object moved. The variable we use for that is d and the unit is m for meters, whereas the displacement is a vector that points from where the object started to where it ended regardless of the specific path that it took. In IB physics specifically, we use the variable s for displacement and the unit is also in meters. Here's an example of what I mean by distance and displacement. Let's say that we have a person who moves in this path. They start here, they walk three meters up, three meters to the right, and three meters down, and they end there. So the total distance is equal to nine meters. That's the total length of the actual path that they actually traveled. Whereas the displacement is just a vector that points from where they started to where they ended and completely ignores the path that they took to get there. So here I can see that the displacement is definitely three meters to the right. When they're ending, they've kind of canceled up their up and down motion. And so they've moved three meters to the right, but nothing else. So the displacement here would be three meters to the right. It has that direction as well because displacement is a vector. Here's another example. Let's say that a person moves like this. They move three meters up and then four meters this way. Their total distance is seven meters because they just moved three meters and then four. And their displacement is gonna be this straight line here. So I need to figure out a way of finding that length of that straight line. And you may be able to guess that this is making a right triangle. So in this case in particular, to find the displacement, we would use the Pythagorean theorem. Plugging in our numbers gets me a total displacement of five meters. That side has a length of five meters. And I wouldn't expect you to get the exact angle for that displacement. We don't really go that far into displacement specifically. So I would just say that the displacement is five meters up and right. Here's another example. Let's say that they move like this. They just move six meters to the right like this. So obviously their distance here is just six meters and their displacement is actually also going to be six meters because if we draw that straight line here, the two things happen to be equal. So displacement is six meters to the right. So you may have noticed based on this pattern that distance can be bigger than or equal to displacement, but it can never be smaller than displacement. One more example, let's say that they move like this. Here they've moved forward six and then backward six and they ended. And so their total distance is 12 meters. And if we were to draw a vector from where they started to where they ended, the vector wouldn't have any length because the start and end point are the same. So we would say that the displacement is actually just zero meters. When we're dealing with motion on an axis, we need to define a zero point where we measure everything else from and a positive and negative direction. Both of these are arbitrary. You can choose for yourself which direction is positive and negative and where the zero point is. So I'm gonna choose zero to be right here and these will be my positive and negative directions. And these will be my numbers. So I'm going to have this person move along the number line and observe the differences in their distance and their displacement. So I'm gonna have them move up here to positive five meters. And I can see that their displacement was positive five and their distance was also positive five. I'm now going to add a second distance and a second displacement and say they move back here to three meters. So because they're moving in the opposite direction of the positive direction, their displacement is gonna to have to be considered negative because they went from five down to three. So if displacement is negative, that just means the object is being displaced in the negative direction. Distance can never be negative because it's a scalar. It has nothing to do with direction. It's always positive. So here, the displacement would be negative two meters and the distance would be positive two meters because you just moved another two. And after I add those two motions together, I can see that the total displacement is three meters and the total distance traveled was seven meters. And I can see that those sums work for the two individual distances and displacements. So the way that we add them kind of fits the definition of distance and displacement themselves, because displacement can add or subtract. If you backtrack, you're gonna get closer to where you started, and so that's gonna decrease your displacement. Whereas if you just move back and forth, you're always increasing your distance no matter what, because the distance is always positive. 
We can also flip which side is positive and which side is negative and still get very meaningful results. So if I perform this exact same motion, I can see that the only real difference here is which direction is being considered positive and negative. So this is saying I have a displacement of negative three and a distance of positive seven. And I can see that that's true because right is negative. So this is still describing that same exact motion as before. We're just using different symbols to describe it. So this is one reason why which side you choose is positive and negative is totally arbitrary here. So that's how you use the concept of distance and displacement to describe motion.